What's up everyone, Alex here. So alongside the reveal of Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D and of course the entire trilogy during the Nintendo Direct, there were several previews that came out on various websites and on YouTube that talked about you know, the fact that they got to play Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D for about 45 minutes, which is a short span of time. And so in this video, I want to compile 10 things that you need to know coming out from those preview events and these preview articles and videos that, you know, is to me very interesting that you should know, because while much of the game is going to be retaining a lot of the things that you've come to know and love about Dragon Quest 3, there are also some changes that were implemented to adhere to the modern standards of JRPG players. And this is all done with consideration from Yuji Ori. Basically what that means is that they constantly talk to Yuji Ori when implementing certain features and they talk to him and made sure that he's okay with it, which, you know, that's a huge amount of respect for the man responsible for this series. And if there's any one particular bullet point here that you are really excited about, please post them in the comments below so we can talk about it. Now, I will also give this caveat that I don't have B-roll footage, much like everybody else who actually talked about the game on YouTube. So I'm gonna be using the trailer footage repeatedly. So you can just listen to this if you want. Anyways, let's get right into the list of 10. Number one. The primary goal of the remake was to do right by fans of the original game, but also see it as an opportunity to introduce JRPG fans unfamiliar with Dragon Quest. Number 2. A new approach for HD 2D Hayasaka mentioned that while previous HD 2D games have had a darker motif, they wanted Dragon Quest 3's world to feel more distinct, hence the more colorful palette, which is in line with the overall wholesomeness of the series. There's also more detail, especially with the day and night cycle, which was a gameplay feature present in the original game. Number 3. The entire soundtrack was recorded in full by the Tokyo Metropolitan Symphony Orchestra. I remember when I played Dragon Quest VIII and it had a full symphonic soundtrack, it completely lifted the entire experience for me, and so I don't doubt that the Tokyo Metropolitan Symphony Orchestra's rendition of these fantastic songs is going to be breathtaking and amazing. Number 4. Has three cutely named difficulty settings. The normal mode is simply called Dragon Quest. Hard mode is called Draconian Quest, which will give you less XP and money. And the easy mode is the cutely named Draki Quest, which I'm guessing will give you more XP and money. Now, I should point out that unlike previous releases, you can actually toggle between these at any time. Number 5. The game will have three battle speeds. It will be normal, fast, and ultra fast. Some reviewers have mentioned that normal felt quite slow, perhaps meant to invoke the same speed of the original release. Number 6. Voice acting will be available in English and Japanese. Battle chirps and main story dialogue will be voiced, but can be turned off for that classic experience. Additional text languages available include your usual figs, which is French, Italian, German, and Spanish, Korean, and traditional and simplified Chinese. Number 7. You can now zoom through ceilings. For people who don't know, Zoom, or using Camaro Wings, which kind of do the same thing, is a spell that can take you back to town. The problem with that is that in older games, you hit your head if you cast it indoors. But with Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D, using Camaro Wings and Zoom won't prevent you from using them. Number 8. Generous autosave at the end of every battle. This is great news because sometimes you just run into a really bad encounter and you're like, oh no, I haven't saved. So this will actually help alleviate those situations. Number nine, it'll have new context-based tutorials to introduce new people to the mechanics specific to the series. For example, if one of your party members falls in battle, a new revival tutorial will pop up to tell you that you need to go to a church whenever you need to revive a party member. Another helpful tutorial is how to manage character item inventories, since every party member can still only access the items they have in their own bag. And number 10, it will include additional story scenarios written with Yuji Ori's supervision. Now we're not quite sure if these are going to be side narratives or incorporated into the main story, but either way it's going to be a fun surprise for veterans to discover. 
Oh, and actually, before I forget, because of Dragon Quest 3 HD2D's focus on introducing new players to Dragon Quest, I thought I'd mention that the game is being developed by Art Dink and Team Asano, who both worked on Triangle Strategy, which is my game of the year of 2022. This game is a tactical turn-based RPG that's great for anyone who's new to the genre and wanting to get in. It's got a great cast of characters, each with their own classes, as well as a streamlined battle system that's one of my favorites in tactical RPG history. So if what I said made you curious about the game, click on this video to find out more.